two lectures uh, we have uh, uh, seen uh, at uh, different um, uh, kinds of uh, databases or uh, try to uh, see what happens when we try to manage data that are not easily amenable to uh, storage in a relational database. And uh, uh, in this uh, uh, context we looked at uh, object oriented databases where uh, uh, d data that are stored are uh, uh, complex data, uh, data objects in the sense that uh, they not only abstract the structure of a uh, uh, of of uh, of some uh, data item, but also its behavior. What kind of behavior? Uh, in this lecture and the next three lectures, we are going to look at another important um, kind of data management issues that that occur in practice, uh, day in and day out, uh, 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 where uh, which can be in in uh, in a nutshell kind of captured as the combined data management issues uh, related to unstructured or semi-structured data and uh, heterogeneous data sets uh, and uh, 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 what are called as uh, self-describing data sets. Uh, so, what happens uh, uh, in, in the real world is that uh, there are uh, rather than uh, having one specific database, even in uh, uh, a specific, uh, uh, even in a given uh, uh, UOD or you, even in a given uh, system context, like let us say we have a, a huge company, uh, let us say huge multinational company which, which spans uh, uh, several countries or, or even uh, uh, not even not so huge companies which, which let us say span several cities, uh, they do not use one single database uh, for the entire company. It is quite impractical for several reasons, for, for historical and for uh, several other kinds of uh, tactical reasons, uh, they use uh, many different kinds of databases and many different kinds of data sources. As a result, what happens is over a period of time, trying to reconcile these different uh, data sources becomes uh, more and more difficult. Uh, and uh, worse, uh, it could well be the case that one part of the company is using, uh, let us say, uh, Windows based uh, systems, another part is uh, uh, of the company is using say Linux based systems, another part is using uh, Macintosh systems and so on and uh, 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 the, uh, you, you would not have, uh, you, you, it would not be possible to create a single database system that spans across all these different uh, 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 operating platforms and then works uh, 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 coherently. And in addition, uh, in addition to the above, the huge amount of uh, uh, unstructured or in some sense semi-structured data is, cre is being created day in and day out uh, in the form of letters, faxes, memos, uh, web pages emails, uh, uh, documents and so on and so forth. So, so, uh, so much of data is being generated, all of which uh, cannot be easily uh, uh, accessed or uh, uh, we, we, it is not possible to simply define a database so that uh, you, you put everything into this, uh, 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 into this database. Uh, what is required is some kind of a simple mechanism that can, uh, th that can uh, help describe uh, a, a data element uh, in in a uh, in a fashion that is independent of any uh, operating platform or any uh, encoding. I mean, there could be different encodings as well. I mean, uh, one could uh, uh, one could be using ASCII encoding, one could be using Unicode encoding, one could be using uh, some other kind of uh, encoding, and so on. So, uh, whatever be the encoding, whatever be uh, uh, or, or whatever be the kind of uh, uh, way uh, data is being stored. Uh, it should be able to, uh, one should be able to uh, uh, reconcile between all of them in a uniform fashion. 
Now, uh, what is, uh, uh, how do we do that and uh, uh, how do we reconcile all of these different uh, data elements under uh, uh, one, uh, uh, under one simple, uh, 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 in, a, in a simple fashion. For this, uh, the emerging answer over the last uh, uh, few years uh, is XML or the extensible markup language. So, we should be looking into XML and uh, XML as applied to semi-structured data in, in the next, uh, uh, in, in this and the following two lectures. And XML is, uh, although it is so simple in practice, where, where uh, uh, it would seem that uh, it, there is nothing to it, uh, has, uh, has become a very important source of uh, data interchange and data representation and uh, data description uh, 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 in the post-internet world, in, uh, so to say. Why XML? And uh, <coughs> now what are the what are the reasons uh, when uh, or what are the situations when we when we can say that uh, XML uh, makes sense and uh, when we can use XML? Uh, managing heterogeneous data sources is uh, is is a very valid uh, example. When when there are several different data sources, let's say you are you are designing a data warehouse and you are uh, taking uh, 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 transactional data from different. Uh, uh, OLTP databases or let us say you are uh, trying to uh, reconcile data bit, uh, from different uh, 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 different uh, files uh, uh, where let us say uh, you have different spreadsheets or, or word documents or uh, uh, some other kinds of uh, files and, and you are uh, uh, planning to reconcile all this data uh, that, is, that is stored in each of these uh, different databases and integrate them into one common data source. That is when XML comes, uh, really comes into play. And similarly, data self description. What if uh, there is no, uh, what if you do not know uh, or uh, uh, what if whoever is using your data does not know how your data is organized? Uh, uh, let us say your, uh, your employee record, what if whoever is requesting for your employee record does not know what are all the fields that, that your employee record contains and uh, uh, what are the constraints on those fields and so on. Uh, and uh, what if there is no single way by which employee records can be organized at all? Maybe everybody has a different way of organizing employee imp information. Uh, one might say uh, uh, we require social security number as the primary key and in cases where, uh, uh, in places where there is no uh, such concept as social security number, we could say something like PAN number and uh, uh, or uh, ration card number or whatever or, or, or just name and, and so on. So, the, the, uh, and uh, uh, what all should go into this thing? So, some places have first name, last name, middle name, initials and so on. And in some other places, we just say name and so on. So, so, so uh, there may not be a single way by which we describe uh, uh, data about any specific entity. So, uh, uh, the, the best way to manage such situations is data self-description. Whatever data that, that you are sending across uh, between applications in, in different uh, contexts, uh, let the data itself describe. Uh, uh, in what way it is organized. Let the, let the data and the metadata, that is data about data, be uh, 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 be sent in one packet, uh, that is uh, 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 be integrated in a way that uh, 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 just by looking at this packet of information, we can not only get the data, but also the way in which data is organized. And uh, the, the, the third major use of XML is in semi-structured data management. I mean, uh, uh, several different kinds of data sources are not really structured uh, uh, documents, for example, documents, letters, or faxes, and so on, where uh, this, uh, 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 th there is some resemblance, uh, th there is some semblance of structure. For example, a letter should have a from and a to uh, and uh, some kind of uh, addressing like dear sir and uh, whatever and subject and uh, complimentary closing and so on. But, but beyond that, the text itself or what goes into each of them, uh, there is no uh, 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 specific rules that, that says uh, this is the way data has to be organized. So, uh, such kinds of uh, databases or data sources are called se uh, uh, semi-structured data source. And uh, a huge uh, uh, um, supply of semi-structured data is of course, the world wide web. I mean, uh, uh, any HTML data that is, that is written, uh, uh, that is present over the <coughs> or that is uh, 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 serve, uh, served over the world wide web uh, is a semi-structured data. That is, uh, uh, there is no specific structure to a HTML document. However, 
part of the HTML document is uh, 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 is in some sense described. Like say, suppose you say h1 and slash h1, it means that this is the first header, or the, or the first level header uh, in the same structure uh, in, in in the HTML document. Similarly, you say uh, p and slash p you say, uh, uh, to to denote that the paragraph has uh, started here and uh, it it ends here and so on. So there's some semblance of structuring, but there's no uh, 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 rigid structuring that, that exists for the uh, 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 for any HTML document, and to manage such uh, 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 data sources or, uh, or manage such data, uh, XML becomes very important again. So, what is XML, uh, and uh <coughs> what are its properties? XML or the extensible markup language is actually a subset of uh, uh, an earlier markup language called SGML. Uh, st <coughs> standard generalized markup language. Uh, uh, what do you understand by the term markup language? Or what does it mean uh, by uh, the term markup language? I am sure uh, you would have uh, probably used uh, the, the well known HTML or, or the hypertext markup language in creating web pages. Even though uh, there are a number of uh, uh, web creation tools that are available today, uh, it, uh, most of us would have uh, uh, tried our hands at uh, working uh, straight with plain vanilla HTML. That is, uh, uh, go straight to HTML and start changing, uh, 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 ch changing uh, uh, the HTML document directly. Uh, open it up in uh, Notepad or VI or some uh, text editor like that, and uh, uh, open it, uh, change it directly. Now, HTML is a markup language. What is a markup language? Markup language is is essentially a, a uh, the, the name used for languages where uh, the uh, where the metadata. That, that goes into describing the data is embedded within the data itself. That is in a HTML document, the metadata that says which is the first level header, which is the second level header, which is a paragraph, which is a hyperlink and where does the hyperlink connect to and so on and so forth. All this metadata is embedded as part of the data itself and it is embedded in the same form that is using the same encoding and the same local. Uh, 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 and uh, even the same fonts. I mean, if it is rendered uh, by any text editor, it is uh, it's rendered using the same font as uh, the the data itself is rendered. So, uh, therefore, if you are using a, 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 a Unicode uh, uh, as as your base, then the the entire uh, uh, set of data and metadata would uh, would would follow Unicode. <coughs> And uh, like we said earlier, uh, S, uh, XML is actually uh, a derivative of the lesser known SGML. And uh, the, the idea behind uh, XML, although uh, XML is, uh, has become so famous and uh, uh, in, in the post internet era, the idea of uh, XML far predates the uh, uh, internet itself. And uh, uh, it, 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 uh, uh, it stems from SGML, uh, which was uh, the, the standard that was used for document management and how to, how to manage uh, uh, documents within, uh, how to manage data and metadata within documents. And there are several uh, SGML based tools like, uh, 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 and I am sure, uh, and, and uh, SGML and related tools. For example, uh, uh, if you use uh, Linux, I am sure you might have used uh, this, uh, th this software called Info. Which is uh, uh, which, which is based around a markup uh, uh, kind of language, where uh, 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 which which in some sense uh, predates uh, 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 the, the World Wide Web in terms of hypertext usage within a single uh, uh, machine. So it was originally designed to be a fle uh, flexible uh, text formatting uh, text format for uh, electronic publishing. However, uh, today XML plays a major role in data exchange, uh, 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 seamless data exchange over the web and uh, several different other application areas. In fact, uh, uh, the, the, by, uh, the de facto standard of exchanging application data over the web is fast uh, becoming XML. Of, of course, there are other standards, but uh, uh, XML because of uh, its simplicity is fast uh, uh, overwhelming or uh, are taking over all other different standards of uh, data exchange over the web. So, what are what are some of the features of uh, XML? XML is uh, essentially a cross-platform uh, uh, entity which is independent of any software and hardware means for transmitting information. That is, uh, uh, it doesn't. Uh, uh, the, the way in which an XML document is stored uh, is not dependent upon what software 
you are using for example, whether you are working on Windows or Linux uh, and even hardware, what hardware you are using, whether you are using an Intel uh, based uh, PC or uh, uh, Macintosh, I mean uh, uh, Motorola based uh, 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 Macintosh powered by a Motorola processor or, uh, or so on. So, uh, it does not really uh, 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 change, I mean uh, uh, across all of these platforms uh, XML uh, uh, at the structure and description of an XML document would remain the same. Uh, XML basically describes data in the form of uh, one or more XML documents, where uh, each XML document uh, <coughs> uh, is in the form of uh, some kind of a, a tree uh, containing both the data and metadata. And uh, uh, XML uh, is a markup language, uh, but uh, uh, it is not a a computer language or it is not a procedural language. I mean, uh, 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 however, uh, there are uh, it, it also uh, there, there are some kinds of computer programs uh, namely uh, especially say XSLT uh, which uh, 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 which read XML documents and behave in different ways accordingly. Uh, for example, if you have a C program or, or, or a Perl program and uh, you run it through the Perl interpreter, the Perl interpreter behaves in different ways based on uh, uh, what is written in the Perl program. Uh, in a sense, uh, uh, so, so in that sense one can call XML as uh, a programming language, however it is not a uh, complete programming language in the sense that it does not have all constructs that, that make up a programming language and hence it is it's, uh, it's just a markup language. In and uh, 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 XML uh, uh, can, uh, can also use uh, uh, what is called as a DTD or a document type definition which is again being first replaced by what is called as an XML schema to actually describe the structure in which data has to be organized or, or to describe the data itself. So, what does XML contain? Uh, if you have worked in HTML where HTML is, uh, 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 is a markup language for creating hypertext documents, uh, you would have probably come across several different uh, uh, reserved tags that HTML itself provides. For example, we talked about H1. Uh, so, suppose you, uh, you you write a H1 tag within angular braces, it means that uh, 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 the, uh, the, uh, whatever lies within this tag is the uh, is a first level header in the HTML document. H1 is uh, for, uh, uh, for example, a uh, uh, is an example of a reserved tag in HTML. Similarly, p the, 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 the tag called p uh, defines a paragraph, p and slash p defines a paragraph. So, again p is a uh, reserved uh, uh, tag in HTML. Like that uh, HTML has nearly 100 different uh, uh, pre predefined elements, uh, you only using which you can uh, define a HTML document. On the other hand, XML has no predefined elements, that is there is no uh, uh, H or there is no uh, uh, H1, H2, H3, there is no P, there is no BR, there is no UL, there is no uh, uh, LI or uh, any such uh, uh, element that is defined by uh, uh, that, that is defined by XML. In fact, it is the uh, ownership or it is the responsibility of the creation or document the creator to actually invent tags or invent uh, metadata that, that describes the data. And uh, uh, it is completely up to the user or up to the creator of the XML document uh, to, to describe or to find or to find what might be termed as um, uh, appropriate uh, 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 metadata terms in order to define the uh, data that is available. And uh, uh, that that is what makes an XML document self descriptive. We will see how uh, uh, that, that happens in a short while from now. But before that, uh, let us uh, look at the uh, look at what are the uh, 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 what are the motivations behind uh, XML, what is it meant to do. Uh, uh, let us take a contrasting feature to begin with. HTML, for example, uh, HTML was uh, basically meant to uh, 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 meant to describe how data ought to be displayed by a browser. It is a logical data description language, but nevertheless uh, it is meant for display, HTML is meant for display. That is it, it tells a browser how to render the data. Uh, it tells the browser for example, this is a uh, uh, first level header. So, so do whatever you are doing uh, uh, in order to display first level header. This is a paragraph break. So, do whatever you are doing to uh, uh, display a paragraph break. Uh, 
okay uh, or uh, this is uh, bold okay so so do whatever you are doing to uh, uh, display bold characters and so on so primarily H html is dis, uh, is uh, designed for uh, display or uh, uh, or uh, logically desc uh, describing how a data ought to be rendered on uh, on a browser in contrast xml is uh, dis uh, designed to describe data and focus on what the data really is okay so uh, essentially xml is uh, uh, is is made to uh, uh, was was uh, uh, was oriented towards data exchange rather than data rendering and uh, uh, therefore xml isn't uh, really a replacement for a html in fact xml is a complement of html and there are several tools that uh, given an xml document will parse an xml uh, document and convert it to appropriate html documents so, so that it can be rendered by a browser so xml is basically meant for describing the data while uh, html is meant for uh, uh, describing how the data ought to be rendered <coughs> So, what does an XML do? Uh, uh, have a look at the slide uh, here, uh, that, that is uh, shown here. Uh, this slide shows a small XML fragment. Uh, so, look at how the fragment looks like. Uh, there is a start of a tag here, which looks like there is a start of a tag here, which looks like uh, 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 any HTML tag in the sense that it is, uh, uh, <coughs> it is embedded within angular braces. So, and uh, just like HTML tag, uh, a tag ends with a slash tag. So, a notice tag ends with a slash notice. The, the to tag ends with slash to and from tag ends with slash from. However, as you see here, each of these uh, uh, are arbitrary. I mean, it just says notice and it is to and from and so on. So, essentially what this uh, fragment is describing is that this is a notice okay, where the notice begins here and ends here, where the notice is sent to the students of first year from hostel warden uh, with the heading air conditioner and with the body of the note, uh, notice as whatever that, that is written here. Right? So, uh, body is, uh, uh, is denoted between body and slash body and heading is denoted between uh, heading and slash heading. Now, you might ask uh, how does uh, any uh, browser know how to interpret to and from and heading and body and so on. The simple answer is it does not. And uh, uh, it is the responsibility of uh, the parser uh, or whoever writes the parser uh, to, to also write uh, what ought to be done when uh, the, the parser come ac comes across a notice uh, or comes across the, a, a two field in a notice and so on. Okay. Otherwise, uh, if, if an XML document is rendered in a, uh, a, a generic browser like say Internet Explorer or so, if, if this particular fragment were to be rendered in a, a Internet Explorer, you would just get a tree like structure. As you can see, this is a tree like structure, this is a hierarchy. That is, uh, at the first level, there is uh, there's this uh, uh, notice comma slash notice, okay, which is which is the first level element, and there are one, two, three, and four second level elements. Okay, so so it's a tree comprising of two levels of hierarchy, uh, one node at the top, denoting notice, and four nodes below it are four children, uh, uh, denoting two from heading and body. <coughs> So, uh, as we saw that, that the XML fragment denoted something called notice and uh, which has a uh, from and to and message body and so on, but as such the XML document itself does not do anything, it just describes it. So, uh, it just says notice slash notice and from and to, it, it does, uh, uh, beyond that it is nothing else, uh, 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 it does not do anything else. So, it is just some kind of uh, what may be termed as wrapped information, that is uh, information uh, in, in this sense, uh, I am using the term information to mean metadata. So, uh, metadata is, uh, uh, is wrapped uh, uh, around uh, data elements in the XML document. And uh, how to display this XML document, how to send, how to receive, how to, uh, what actions to perform in response to each of these uh, 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 elements, uh, all of them have to be handled separately. XML by itself does not describe any of them. Now, what is the use of uh, creating such a, uh, uh, one might ask uh, uh, 
uh, too generic a model for creating data, I mean uh, creating and describing data. What is the use of such a uh, 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 such an element or uh, su such a mechanism? Firstly, as you can see, regardless of what kind of data that you are describing, uh, XML is pure text. Uh, is pure uh, uh, everything is in textual form uh, uh, only that the, the encoding may differ obviously but uh, 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 it is possible to find out what is the encoding and detect what is the encoding and uh, uh, ch change it accordingly but whatever it is uh, it is uh, 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 given an encoding it is just plain text there is no proprietary forms by which uh, 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 data within the uh, data are attributes or values within the xml uh, uh, within an XML document is described. So, it is just plain vanilla data. Okay. So, because it is just textual data, it can be exchanged seamlessly uh, between different systems. So, uh, whether it is uh, different operating platforms like uh, uh, Linux or Windows or Unix or Solaris or whatever or different uh, processors itself, uh, 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 different hardware platforms, it does not matter. So, over the web or uh, over anywhere, uh, an XML document can be uh, exchange seamlessly without any uh, uh, need for any kind of interfacing for XML documents. But one might still ask that uh, huge amount of uh, 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 an XML document is a huge waste of space in the sense that just to describe a small notice uh, and, and to say that the notice was sent from someone and uh, sent uh, to someone and uh, with the heading so on. So, uh, you need to uh, uh, add a, uh, a lot of padding information like uh, to and slash to and from and slash from and so on. However, uh, that is not too much of a problem because uh, uh, today uh, a storage is far cheaper than, than what it was earlier. Uh, and uh, uh, storage is much more cheaper than what, what it was earlier and uh, disks, uh, can, uh, disks can store uh, larger and larger amounts of data. And uh, uh, processing is also faster, so, so it is quite uh, uh, and there are uh, many numbers of uh, many uh, very efficient uh, XML uh, parsers that are freely available. Uh, therefore, parsing an XML document and creating a structure uh, uh, is, is quite simple. Also, uh, uh, there, there are different kinds of uh, 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 there, there are different uh, 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 kinds of software that are available for compressing data. You you have uh, you may have WinZip or GZip or uh, uh, BunZip and uh, uh, Compress and, and so on and so forth. So which uh, uh, which can be used to uh, compress. Uh, textual data very efficiently and especially if the textual data contains repetitions uh, which an XML document uh, 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 describing some class of elements uh, is, uh, is, is apt to uh, uh, contain different kinds of repetitions, uh, one, can, uh, uh, one can expect uh, a huge percentage of compression to be performed. So, uh, even if uh, uh, an XML uh, document uh, uh, is uh, takes a lot of space uh, uh, for, for describing a set of data, it can still be stored in an efficient fashion by compressing the document and uh, uh, decompressing it on the fly and so on. And uh, uh, converting any data set like uh, a proprietary uh, 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 block level data set to XML can greatly, greatly reduce the complexity of data exchange between different incompatible systems and uh, uh, again over the internet. And uh, a huge uh, uh, application area of XML naturally is in B two B or business to business uh, uh, interchange. So, so each uh, uh, business house or, or even within one single business house, there could be different standards that are used. And uh, trying to interface between these standards becomes a huge challenge. And that is where the uh, utility of XML comes uh, becomes significant. <coughs> so, uh, uh, XML uh, uh, see unlike uh, for example, MS Word data which can be opened only by MS Word or uh, Postscript data which can be only uh, opened only by Postscript viewers or, or PDF data which can be opened only by PDF viewers. Uh, unlike uh, 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 those, XML is just text data. So, it is not bound to a specific application or, or a specific browser. Uh, you can open uh, XML using any uh, uh, application that can deal with textual data. You can open XML in Notepad. You can open it in VI. You can open it in uh, uh, normal Internet Explorer, which which will show, uh, which will just show, uh, which which can support XML directly, and which just shows a 
tree structured. If uh, a browser does not support XML directly, it just shows you the textual form of the XML data. And uh, there are several different uh, 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 APIs that are written wherein uh, you can access XML uh, data sources as though you are accessing a database. So, let us come back to XML syntax and uh, look at some more aspects of what makes up an XML document. Now, here again uh, this is the same old notice, uh, notice comma slash notice, however, uh, with a few more things that are added. Okay. Now, you might have noticed already that uh, uh, any symbol here, any tag that is opened here has to be ended. Okay. So, notice uh, uh, is ended by slash notice body is ended by slash body, 2 is ended by slash 2. Okay. So, in XML it is mandatory for, uh, uh, for properly closing every tag, uh, which is not so in HTML. In HTML certain kinds of tags like say uh, uh, P and uh, uh, font and so on and so forth uh, need not be closed and uh, 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 whenever a second uh, P tag comes in, uh, the, the browser automatically closes the first P tag. But here, uh, an XML parser would uh, flag uh, syntax error if a given tag is not closed, that is it is open and it is not closed. Okay. However, there are exceptions, uh, have a look at the memo tag here, memo type equal to d slash like this. So, uh, uh, that is another way of uh, uh, expressing uh, a, a tag or, or, a, or a metadata that does not contain a large amount of data. In, in fact, uh, the, the metadata contains what is called as an attribute of name type with value d and that is it and, and there is no other uh, uh, no other data that is associated with this tag or uh, a tag is a metadata uh, metadata item actually. Okay. So, uh, 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 by default uh, uh, an XML document uh, should be properly nested and properly closed that is every uh, open tag should be properly closed and it goes without saying that the nesting of XML elements has also to be proper except in cases where uh, uh, that is uh, closing of uh, for, for the uh, case of closing of tags, uh, uh, there are cases where you can close a tag within a uh, single line as shown in this memo example here. In addition, look at the first line here where, th where the first line starts with uh, 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 one angular braces question mark and XML, th the keyword called XML. If the document begins with this, with this pattern here, then the XML pattern, uh, the, uh, then uh, and if it is passed through an XML parser, the XML parser knows that this is a valid X, uh, XML document. Okay, so uh, uh, this one defines that this is a XML document, and this one defines the version of this document, and this one defines the encoding that is used uh, 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 for describing this document. <coughs> So, uh, uh, so, 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 just to summarize what we have seen, uh, so, so the, the first line basically is a declaration that says that th this document is an XML document uh, with with the, with the uh, given version and um, uh, uh, <coughs> with, with the given version and encoding, and uh, uh, following the XML declaration uh, is the root element of an XML document. So, so every XML document. Uh, should be a rooted tree, that is that there should be one root element that that, uh, uh, that begins here and ends at the end of the document. right? So, in this case uh, the, the root of the XML document is the notice tag or, or the notice element. Uh, <coughs> a tag is uh, uh, again some more XML based uh, definitions, this is what is called as a tag, notice or, or from or uh, body and so on, they are, they are called tags. A tag is a simple uh, 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 metadata that is uh, in, uh, embedded within angular braces. On the other hand, the entire set of uh, uh, XML data from notice to slash notice inclusive is called an XML element. That is, uh, a, a, it denotes an XML element called notice, which in turn contains several different XML elements like uh, to, uh, to element and from element and so on. Right. So, uh, the root element is the one uh, th which is the biggest element which contains the entire XML document and every XML document must have a root element. And uh, of course, the next four lines de uh, describe the child elements from the root and uh, to from heading body and so on and the last line describes the end of the document. 
So, as we said before, uh, in XML, it is uh, illegal to omit closing tags. So, so every uh, uh, tag that is opened has to be closed properly. So, so notice has to be closed by slash notice and uh, uh, from has to be closed by slash from and, uh, and so on. Uh, <coughs> this is again contrary to XML. So, all elements must have a closing tag uh, with the exception of unary tags like the uh, memo uh, tag that is shown in this slide here. So, uh, where, the, where there can be a single line tag which can be closed directly. And uh, um, the XML declaration that is the, the first uh, line here in this uh, document here, this is not an element. That is why uh, 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 to, to distinguish between a declaration and metadata, a declaration starts with uh, less than and question mark. Therefore, that, that gives an implicit constraint that, uh, uh, that any uh, name of an XML tag cannot begin with a punctuation mark like question mark. So, uh, because it will be treated differently, it will be passed differently and that is not an element therefore, it would not have a closing tag. And XML tags are case sensitive therefore, a notice with, with all small letters and a notice with a capital N are different tags. And uh, uh, it goes without saying that the tags must be properly nested. And uh, uh, as we saw in the uh, previous slides, uh, a tag or metadata can have different attributes. So, uh, let us look at it again that for example, here uh, memo, okay. uh, memo is a metadata okay, which says that this is a memo okay, and here is an attribute which pertains to memo okay, and the attribute name is type and the value is d. So, so therefore, it says that uh, um, this is a memo uh, whose, uh, uh, whose, uh, which contains uh, an attribute called a type and whose value is d. So, this is a type d kind of memo. Okay. So, uh, uh, and uh, attribute values must be quoted. So, uh, uh, even when I say the type equal to d and d is a single letter, uh, it has to be quoted. It, uh, it, should, uh, 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 it should lie within double quotes. Uh, so, so, that is uh, double quotes or single quotes. So, that is uh, in contrast to HTML, where it is optional to uh, quote uh, uh, an argument attribute value unless the value contains a space within it. And uh, in XML, white spaces are preserved and not truncated as in uh, HTML. So, uh, wh what this means is that, uh, uh, for example, if I put a white space here, air conditioner uh, and three spaces and then slash heading, then the data of this heading is actually air space conditioner followed by three spaces. Uh, in HTML though, uh, all the trailing and leading white spaces are ignored when, when HTML is, uh, uh, is being rendered on a browser. Uh, this is not so in XML and uh, all spaces are considered. And of course, the, the syntax for writing comments in, uh, uh, in XML uh, with a, a slash exclam exclamation mark and two dashes and end with two dashes and a uh, uh, open uh, close uh, uh, angular brace. right? So, this is the same syntax as uh, that is used in HTML. <coughs> so, uh, XML elements uh, are, are given uh, or a XML document forms a specific tree structure and uh, the relationship between elements uh, primarily uh, th there are exceptions to it, which will uh, which we'll look into in more detail in the next uh, 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 session on XML. But primarily, uh, uh, the, the relationship between uh, um, uh, between two or more uh, uh, tags uh, uh, is either parent, child, or sibling. That is. Uh, 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 that, that is one is uh, 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 an ancestor of the other or uh, uh, they, are, they are at the same level in, in some sense that is uh, uh, or one is uh, uh, at, a, at a higher level and one is at a lower level. So, so you can associate a level value for uh, each uh, uh, tag in an XML document. And the XML element, I said that uh, uh, what is meant by an XML element, uh, XML element uh, is everything from a starting tag uh, to the ending tag including the tags itself. So, so notice to slash notice including the tags uh, forms the uh, uh, root element in the XML document. And uh, an element, uh, what, what all can an element contain? Uh, obviously, we have seen that an element can contain other elements. For example, um, uh, 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 here the, uh, 
uh, uh, element called notice contains other elements called to, from, heading and so on. So, so uh, an element can contain other elements or uh, can have an element element uh, or, a, or mix it content that is uh, it can contain both uh, uh, other elements and some uh, textual data as part of this or it could contain simple content where it is just simple uh, textual data or an element could be empty as well uh, which, which is an empty content. An example of an empty element uh, we saw was the memo element. So, uh, which uh, where you need not separately specify a closing tag for empty, uh, empty elements. You can just uh, uh, close off the elements within, the, within a single line and uh, an element can also have attributes. So, uh, uh, how can you define an XML tag or, or an XML, uh, XML element? What, all, uh, uh, what are the rules for describing XML elements? As we saw earlier, uh, obviously you cannot begin an XML element with a punctuation mark like a exclamation mark or a, a question mark and so on and so forth. Uh, uh, the the uh, element names, uh, names of an element can contain uh, letters, numbers and, and other kinds of characters like dot and colon and so on. However, they cannot start with a number or a punctuation character and uh, they also cannot start with uh, letters XML uh, uh, in any form that is uh, 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 case insensitive form of XML because they uh, uh, are reserved for possible future use and uh, names cannot contain spaces. So, uh, uh, you cannot uh, quote uh, a name within double quotes and say uh, th th this is an XML uh, element. So, uh, 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 an XML uh, uh, element tag should be described by a single word and uh, any name can be used because there is no such thing as a reserved word except for XML of course, right. So, and, uh, 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 and you should try to make the names as descriptive as possible in order to describe the metadata. And uh, 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 this slide shows an example of how uh, attributes can be used as uh, 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 children elements and, uh, and vice versa. So, uh, 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 in, in the first example here, uh, there, there is an element called person okay, and uh, person and slash person and the person element has an attribute called gender whose value is male and uh, there is a first name and last name uh, 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 elements which, which are also shown. And in the second uh, uh, example, this uh, gender equal to male attribute becomes another element here. That is, uh, uh, it, it becomes uh, um, an element called gender and the value is male. Now, uh, which is preferable and, uh, and when? Uh, this is similar to the uh, uh, problem that we faced in uh, ER modeling or, or, or entity relationship modeling in one of our first uh, uh, classes. Uh, uh, <coughs> for example, we, we were asking a question whether uh, uh, an, empl uh, 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 an employee working in a department, uh, should it be shown as a department ID attribute for, for the employee entity or uh, 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 an employee working with department as a relationship. Now, which you are going to show depends upon, uh, uh, of, of course, depends upon the specific situation. But the rule of thumb is uh, uh, one needs to describe uh, an XML element just like one needs to describe an entity uh, only for uh, those concepts that have independent existence. That is uh, uh, a person has an independent existence in a, in a UOD regardless of uh, whatever uh, else there is. Uh, however, a gender is uh, closely associated with a person. Uh, so, uh, 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 so, so it does not have a, a separate independent entity. So, so, so that can uh, help you decide uh, when to use a particular uh, data element as, uh, uh, as, uh, 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 as, as an attribute versus as another uh, uh, child element of an existing uh, XML element. When we talk about XML documents, uh, uh, there is often a distinction between what is called as a valid XML document and a well formed XML document. Uh, the, uh, uh, the, the distinction between the two is, is very important uh, 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 mainly when, when we note that uh, uh, a well formed XML document might be invalid where, uh, whereas all valid uh, documents are well formed. So, uh, uh, a well formed XML document simply is a uh, uh, XML document that uh, uh, that conforms to all the XML syntax specifications. That is, uh, what are the XML syntax specifications? Uh, namely, that uh, an XML document should should uh, should be a rooted tree. 
that means it it, it, it has a, a, a root element and uh, uh, elements uh, d do not have spaces in them and uh, every starting element has a uh, has an ending element and uh, uh, the elements are properly nested so on. so uh, all these uh, if if, uh, if if an xml document conforms to all of these syntax rules then it is called a well formed xml document but a well formed xml document need not always be valid where does the notion of validity come from uh, validity uh, we we say that an xml document is valid if it conforms to a schema specification okay so uh, uh, <coughs> the, so, so that the, uh, so so it means that uh, uh, according to uh, an xml schema for example uh, uh, a person okay uh, a person element has a attribute called gender and no uh, child element called gender okay uh, in that case even though both of these are valid xml fragments the first one uh, uh, both both of these are well formed xml fragments the first one is a valid xml fragment whereas the second one is not a valid xml fragment so where is the schema described in uh, in an xml uh, uh, the schema is described in uh, uh, what is called as uh, a dtd or a document type definition <coughs> So, uh, 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 have a look at this uh, 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 this fragment again here, where uh, uh, this is a well formed XML document and then uh, here uh, there is an extra declaration that says standalone equal to yes uh, in the XML declaration. If the standalone equal to yes declaration is there, then, it's, then it explicitly states that the XML document here uh, is only well formed that is uh, 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 it does not have a schema associated with it this is a standalone uh, xml document so uh, in a sense the standalone equal to yes indicates that the document is well formed provided of course that that it is well formed that is uh, 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 the parser gives no error when parsing it and uh, uh, on the other hand where uh, you can say standalone equal to no which is optional uh, and give a uh, uh, link here with with a uh, uh, less than exclamation mark uh, declare a doc type declaration. So with a doc type declaration, you can specify the DTD which describes this XML document. So note that it says doc type notice system notice dot DTD. So it means that in the file called notice dot DTD, uh, the the DTD for this XML fragment or for this XML frag uh, 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 document is available <coughs> and uh, the xml uh, uh, document or the xml fragment is valid if and only if uh, of course uh, first uh, if it is uh, well formed and uh, it conforms to the dtd specification so what is a dtd and uh, and how do you describe a dtd and how do you describe uh, 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 an XML document using a DTD. A DTD simply says that uh, uh, a, a DTD simply uh, defines what all should uh, an XML document contain. That is, uh, uh, which element should be a child of which other element, and which uh, uh, element contains what kind of data, and so on and so forth. So, a DTD stands for document type definition, and a DTD uh, DTD defines all the legal elements of an XML document. And uh, it also defines the document structure uh, within a list of legal elements. And uh, 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 a DTD can be either declared inline, that is, as part of an XML document, or uh, it can also be uh, uh, recalled from an external reference. And this external reference can be uh, uh, anywhere on the internet. That is, it doesn't have to be on on a different file, uh, or uh, it can be anywhere on the internet as long as you can. Uh, 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 you can dereference the DTD uh, by a URI or, or a uniform uh, <coughs> uh, resource indicator, uh, where, where uh, 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 which is which is the uh, 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 like say HTTP colon slash slash whatever. So, so which uh, uh, how you specify URLs for documents? As long as you are able to uh, dereference a, a DTD document with a URI, uh, it is uh, uh, it is possible to place a reference in your XML document. So, uh, if a XML, if a DTD is included within the XML source, then it should be wrapped within a doc type declaration like this. Okay. So, uh, here it says uh, doc type root and uh, this is the, this is the uh, name of the root uh, uh, tag and these are the element declarations. What are the elements that should go into this? 
and uh, 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 if uh, if the DTD is, DTD is external uh, uh, to, to the XML source file, then it should be wrapped with a, docu a doc type definition with the following syntax like this. That is doc type, and uh, root here specifies that uh, 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 <coughs> uh, specifies that root is the uh, 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 specifies the name of the root element in the uh, 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 in the XML document and this is the file name of the XML document and this says that this is a uh, uh, external reference. Here is a example of a XML DTD uh, shown in this uh, slide. As you can see this is uh, this is an inline DTD that means uh, it starts with the doc type here and notice says that notice is the uh, root element of this XML document. And this one says that notice contains uh, from here to here there, there, there ought to be a box uh, brace here. So, uh, 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 or, or rather from here to here that is uh, this is the definition of notice uh, that this is the definition of the document. And the first one says element notice contains two from heading and body that is four different elements uh, in this particular order that is two from heading and body. And everything else that is uh, element 2, element from, element heading and element body contains what is called as PC data or hash PC data. Okay. So, so what is this hash uh, PC data? Uh, <coughs> so, uh, 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 let us uh, uh, go to this slide which, which talks about uh, uh, what each of these elements mean. So, uh, elements 2, from, heading etcetera are, are all these element uh, names and tags are used to uh, mark up elements. And then uh, 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 an element can contain uh, other elements like uh, 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 to, from, heading and so on or it can contain C data or P C data. Okay. So, what is C data and what is uh, P C data? So, uh, a P C data uh, essentially means that uh, parsed character data and C data just means character data. So, so uh, uh, a parsed character data can contain other XML tags as part of the data which, which will actually be parsed and uh, 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 opened as and when required, but character data uh, is not parsed, it is just dumped in, in whatever form it is uh, present. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, you, you can uh, 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 use uh, these predefined entity types like ampersand LT, ampersand GT like you use in normal HTML to, uh, to, to, to denote each of these characters. And uh, we talked about PC data and C data, uh, uh, where uh, which stands for parsed character data and character data respectively. And uh, uh, in in addition to each of these, uh, th there are also other kinds of uh, uh, options that that are provided uh, uh, when defining an XML element. For example, uh, if uh, let us say the the option called uh, from, okay, is uh, 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 if the element called from is optional. Uh, in a notice, a, a, a notice should just have a to address and the from address can be optional, then you can uh, 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 suffix uh, uh, from uh, uh, with a question mark that is from question mark says that uh, the, the element called from may, uh, uh, may exist either 0 or 1 times. Similarly, if I put a star here, let us say heading star, uh, it means that uh, I can have 0 or more heading elements uh, in, in a notice element. Similarly, something like uh, body plus okay, uh, means that a notice can have uh, one or more body elements and so on. So, so these are uh, what are called as wildcard declarations or, or elements that says uh, how uh, 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 elements can be uh, structured. And in fact, one can even say something like uh, to, from and then heading uh, uh, pipe body, pipe is the R symbol. So, which says that a uh, notice can contain uh, a two element from element and either heading or body. So, one of the two uh, because there is only one of uh, uh, them. So, so th that is the uh, 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 that is the simple way in which uh, uh, a DTD is, uh, uh, is uh, written and whenever uh, an XML document fails to conform with a DTD, uh, 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 a validating XML parser that is a parser which validates uh, XML documents against a DTD will flag an error and stop the parsing at that point. Now, uh, uh, in recent times, uh, the, the uh, World Wide Web Consortium or what is called as the W3C uh, has come up with an alternative to uh, XML uh, DTDs which are called as XML schemas or sometimes also termed as X schemas. Uh, 
XML schema uh, is a, a much more detailed description of, uh, uh, of an XML uh, document uh, and uh, uh, it is uh, uh, it, it's, uh, it's used for schema definition. Uh, we shall not be looking into uh, XML schema in more detail in this session uh, due to time constraints, but, but we can uh, uh, look at them in one of the subsequent uh, uh, sessions on XML uh, documents in one of the advanced uh, uh, classes on managing XML data. So, XML schema basically defines elements that can appear in, uh, uh, in, in, an, uh, in a document that is defines uh, elements and attributes which, which are uh, 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 which appear in a document and like a DTD it can also, it also def, uh, defines parent child relationships and, it, and defines order in which the child elements ought to appear and it defines the number of child elements one can have and uh, 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 several other uh, things that, uh, uh, that are typically described by a DTD. And uh, uh, <coughs> Uh, they are they are uh, uh, far more richer and uh, uh, supposedly more useful than than DTDs in, in describing uh, uh, schematic structures for XML documents. And XML schemas uh, uh, a good thing about XML schemas is that they do not have a different syntax fr uh, uh, from the XML uh, syntax itself. That is, uh, uh, unlike DTDs which have a different syntax from the XML syntaxes, XML schemas are written in XML itself. And they also support data types and namespaces and, and so on, which, uh, uh, which we will look at uh, in more detail in one of the uh, subsequent sessions. So, let us summarize what we have uh, learned today. Uh, we have started uh, 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 the, uh, the, this uh, series of uh, uh, a few sessions on XML databases, which is a World Wide Web Consortium standard uh, that is used for uh, uh, data exchange and, uh, uh, and uh, managing semi-structured data and, and self-describing data. And so, it is a, it's a self-expressive, uh, 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 it's, it's a self-describing uh, uh, way of uh, 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 specifying a set of data elements. And then when we talk about an XML uh, document, uh, it is important to distinguish between what is a uh, valid XML document versus what is a well-formed XML document. And uh, well-formedness, uh, uh, all uh, uh, valid uh, documents have to be well formed, but uh, uh, validity itself has to be checked against DTD specifications and now which is being replaced by the XML schema specifications. So, that brings us to the end of this session.